Look at what he says here. He says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, what does that mean? See, come on. Do you, do you see what trusting God is? Yes. Trusting God is saying, okay, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried. Listen, let's get down right to where it's at. I'm not worried about how the mortgage is going to get paid. <coughs> I'm not worried about who's going to pay the Dakota. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about how I'm going to buy groceries. I'm not, because Jesus told me he's going to be with me. Yes. Now, if Jesus, now come on, now stay, now I'm, 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 watch this, watch this. If Jesus loves me enough, come on now, to die on the cross for me. Did Jesus die for you? Yes. yes. If he loves me enough to die on the cross for me, you mean to tell me he don't love me enough to pay my mortgage? Wow. He loves me enough to die for me. But he won't, he, won't, he won't go with me down in the shop right and take care of my food bill. Do you see, do you see what I'm talking about? Do, do, are you, are you, see, this is, see, this is, see, let me tell you something. When God talks about being, being, uh, being aware of this thing, and he's talking about getting away from mammon, you, you got to do this. You, you got to do this. You got to do this. And most people don't do it. I'm going to just, I'm going to straight with you. Most people don't do, most people don't trust God. Now, I know it's hard. I know it's tight. I know it's tight. But I want to get you in the wheelbarrow. When you step in the wheelbarrow, you're telling me, okay, I, 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 do, I trust you. Yes, sir. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Did Jesus die for your sin? Yes, he did. But he won't pay your mortgage. Yes, he did. See, you don't trust him to do it. You see what I'm saying? You see what, do you see this? Yes, he won't. He won't pay my bills. He won't buy me a house. He won't give me a car. He died for me, but he won't give me no shoes. That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense. That don't, even when he has already said he would do it. See, this is no blind faith. This is not blind faith I'm talking about. This is not, this is not blind faith. This is faith in the word. He already said that. Amen. That's right. He said, Beware of covetousness. Be content. Because covetousness leads to trusting in mammon. See, the spirit that's over America right now, she wants to meet her own needs. That's covetousness. That's mammon. Everybody wants to, want to meet their own needs. If you don't, you know, trust in. See, that's, that's the spirit that's governed this, this, this uh, over Washington. Right. They will tell you, we'll take care of you. Uh -huh. we'll, no, you know you won't. Right. God didn't mean for you to take that's care right. of me. That's right. God said he'll take care Amen. of me. But Washington, see, this, it's a demonic thing. He te but he won't, Washington really won't take care of you. Because it's a demonic spirit. They, won't, they, want you to, they, won't, they will lure you to make you think. We'll take care of you. Then they just control you. It's a spirit. It's not people. It's not the president. It's not the senators. It's the spirit hovering this nation. You better get a hold of that. To manipulate the spiritual wickedness in high places. But when the Christians understand what it is and pull down those strongholds, it will no longer control you. Yes, sir. Get your praying right. Yes. That's what God said. Pray for those that are in authority over you. Why should I pray for them? Because those are the ones that the principalities and powers are attacking. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. The demons over this nation yes. go straight for the Oval Office yes. to manipulate and control whoever is in it. Yes. So in turn, he can control you. Yes. It's not people. We have missed it. And all we do is sit around and grab and complain about the president and complain about the senators right, and complain right, about this right, one. Right. You got it wrong. Yeah. I would above all things. Yeah. Supplication of prayer and supplication be made for all saints. Yes. For those that are in authority. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. That's first.
first of all. Yeah. Right, it makes sense. You go right to the top. First of all, because those principalities and powers is focused at the leader of the nation. And once he dominate his thinking, then he can control you. You fighting the president, see the devil laughing. You know, you fighting the president, you fighting the rep, you fighting the politicians. Don't know the one enough. Don't know who you're supposed to be dealing with. Because they're principalities and powers. And then we know, oh, what's going to happen? Whatever you allow to happen. That's what's going to happen. Whatever you, God has told you to pray for them, to get those powers off of them. So that they don't control you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That you may live a quiet, high, yes. and yes. good. peaceable life. Yeah. Yes. With all godliness and honesty and preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you see how the devil been playing games with the Christians? Uh-huh. And we so unspiritual, ain't seen nothing. We think it's Pete Tut. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. That's right. That's right. But you understand that? It's principles. He told us that. We it went right over our heads. Yeah. And so I said, beware of that. You watch that. Beware of that. Beware. Beware of that. Now, Jesus is telling us how to do this. He said, don't. He said, stop trying to serve that thing. Stop trying to serve that system. Stop trying to serve that mammon system. It's it's a system that is destructive. Uh It's a system that's designed by Satan himself. He is the God over the mammon system. And we have been sucked into it. And we think, oh, oh, just uh, go get a good education or go get a good job. And then you're going to be happy ever after. Poor thing. You missed it. You missed it. The first thing they do with your kids is they take and they destroy their minds. Most of you, I guarantee you, most of you, and, I'm, and could I stop and just give a little parents, get down to that school and find out what your kids are learning. Parents, go down to that school and find out what they're telling your kids. You don't know. It's not, listen, it's demonic. There's a demonic attack to take your children away from you and control them. Satan, it's the same thing Hitler did in Germany. Mm-hmm. Same thing. It's, just, it's, it's not people. It's just wicked spirits yes. that's working in high places. Yes. And what better to do than to take... They, they, The devil came and took it from the church. God told you and I to train up your children to teach them and we took our kids and we give them to the devil to train. And you know what they're teaching them? Sexual diversity. Yes. You can be whatever you want to be. Uh-huh. You're a boy and you feel like you're a girl, you, then you should be a girl. Yes, sir. That's what they're telling your kids in school. Yes, and you at home watching TV and watching this program and you don't even know what they're telling your kids. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. See, and if you don't get down there, they're going to take them from you. Because that's where they're still, still their spirits. Spirits. Spiritual wickedness. Mammon, that mammon system. That's coming in suddenly. There's, a, there's an attempt. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an asserted plan in place to totally... Now, it's not going to happen because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But let me tell you something. If the Christians don't wake up, you're going to suffer some adversities beyond your intentions. You, some stuff that you don't really have to, and, and, and I'll be ready to, you're going to have to endure it. Amen. That's right. Because your lack 
of understanding of spiritual warfare. Yeah. And lack of understanding your responsibility to do the word of God and keep God's word before your eyes Amen. and to stay in, on your knees. Amen. Now, I shared something earlier about the church going nowhere without prayer. But let me drop that down another level. Your house is going nowhere without prayer. Your home is going nowhere without prayer. Why? Do you know why the divorce rates, I think, was 54%? Do you know why it's that high? You know why the divorce rates that high? Because nobody's praying. They ain't praying. Everybody's praying. Husbands, they ain't praying in the house. They're not praying. And now watch this. I wonder why they took prayer out of school. Because you took it out of the house. That's why I took it out of school. Yeah, yeah. The question was asked, how many people pray with their children before you send them off to school? I think it's a good question. How many people in here pray with your kids before you send them off to school? Good. Good. And keep doing it. And keep doing it. And keep doing it. Because don't be griping about not taking prayer out of school if you have taken it out of the home. And that's the reason. Oh, do, you, do you see the responsibility of the Christian? See, what we have, let me tell you, can I tell you what much of the church has become? Much of what we call church is no more than just being glorified heathens. You know, there, there's no glory, there's no power. We just want to be nice. We want a nice, oh, I want a nice house. I want a nice car. I want to go on vacation. I want to be nice. I want to just, I want me on big screen TV. Mm. To watch what? See, we just well, we, we want to live. We want to live on vacation. No, the kingdom of God is not like that. The kingdom of God is not like that. The kingdom of God is, is righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. What is your drive? What is your desire? You should have a passion for Jesus beyond anything you know. Passion. Passion for the gospel. You should have a, listen, listen. You, you got to have a prayer life. Listen to me, please, folks. Listen to me. And I'm not talking about just now and leave me down to sleep. You, you need to pray. Pray. Yes. Amen. Establish a prayer life daily. Amen. Establish a prayer life where you pray. Now, people, a lot of people don't come to the prayer meeting here and they say, well, I'm praying at home. No, you're not. I know you're not. You think, oh, I didn't just get off the turnip truck. <laughs> but, I, but listen, you got to do this because if you don't, you're going to lose. Yes, sir. <laughs> you're not going to listen. You got to pray and pray in your home. Pray. Pray and read your Bible. Memorize scriptures. Yes. Put the word in your heart. Yes. Do that. Because that's what's going to cause you to be victorious. Amen. Amen. If you don't, mammon is going to suck you in. Yes. And you'll be serving mammon. And won't even realize it. You'll be serving mammon thinking you're serving God. No. No. Draw into him. People, particularly new people that have just come and listen, you can't be successful without the word of God and prayer in your house and in your body and in you. And if you, you know, and if you, if you, if you, well, I don't, I don't know how to do it. Well, get it. I'm here every morning. Get up and get in here. You say, well, I got to, yes, it's worth it for you. This is, folks, this is real. This is real. This is a life and death thing. Yes. Yes, it is. This is life and death. Yes, it is. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it without the word of God and prayer. Right. You're not going to make it. Amen. The devil is old and mean and he will kill you. Yes, That's right. You can't handle him without the word of God and prayer. And if you've got a problem, you've got a problem, well, then come here. 
I'll be here for you. That's what I'm called to do. I'm called to lead you in prayer. I'm called to lead you in the word of God. That's what God called me to do. And I don't have other problem in my job. You be here. I'll meet you here at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll meet you here because you, you're worth it. You're worth the investment. You are worth the investment because Jesus shed his blood to save you. At least I can sit beside you. Are you still with me? See, folks, we, we, we've been too passive. We've been too passive with church. Passive, just anything. Go, yeah, well, yeah. No, you better get radical. That's right. If you're going to win, you better get radical. You better get radical. You better get radical. I'm telling you, because that's who's going to win. He said, well, is the devil going to take over? No. He's not going to take over. But I tell you what, if you don't get radical, you're going to suffer some things that you don't necessarily have, wouldn't necessarily have to, have to suffer. Amen. Because he's going to come at you just by, just by you having signed your name with Jesus. Yes, Lord. He'll come at you and he'll tear you apart. I, I see, I deal with people all the time. I mean, people that's having major issues. Major issues. They broke, they got no money, they sick. Their homes is tore all to pieces. Husband going one way, the wife going another way. Kids going another way. Babysitters doing, you don't know what they're doing to your kids. That's what starts. God help us. Help us, Jesus, to awake to righteousness. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Mammon sweeping the church. Everybody busy working. I got to work. Ma'am, I ain't trusting God. Why don't you trust God? Yes. Well, I'm trusting God. No, you're not. Mm. You're not trusting him. You're trusting mammon. That's right. mm -hmm. you, you supplying your own needs. You're yeah. trying to meet your own and you'll, it'll never work. Yes. You will be in a tailspin all your life. Yes. That's why you never have enough. Never you're going to be picking and choosing who to pay this month. Yeah. Phone gonna always be ringing because you're serving Mammon, and Mammon is an illegal god. He's wrong. Ain't but one God. God said, "I'm He. Ain't no more beside me. I'm it. I'm it. I am it. And if you don't come my, if you don't serve me, then you're going under." That's why I wanted, I wanted to show you God's declaring who he is. He's declaring who he is. Amen. Now Jesus speaks to us and he said, I want to help you guys. He simply says, now, now turn with me if you will. And it's so elementary. It's so elementary. It's so elementary. Matthew, turn on to Matthew. I could quote it, but I don't, I don't want to quote it. I want to read this to you. Because I want to help you. Now let me tell you something. We're going to, I want to do some step by steps. Right now I have got, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together, I'm putting together a, a series of, of scriptures. What I'm going to do, I'm going to help you. Right now I got them working, I got them working in my office. I'm, I'm putting together, I'm putting together, I'm going to have packages of scriptures. And they're going to be laid out on cards to give you to memorize. I'm gonna, and I'm going to have them. I'm going to have them for you. And I should have them for you by, 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 by another week. By next Sunday, I should have them for you. Give you because see, see, here's what see. I'm responsible. Jesus has called me and placed me on the wall to watch for your soul. Yeah. Amen. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to provide a curriculum for you, right. and I'm going to give you the tools that you need. Amen. Now what you do with them is your call. I can't, make you, I can't make you go to prayer meeting. I can't make you pray. I can't make you read your Bible. I can't make you do that. I'll provide it for you. I'll provide a curriculum for you. I will minister the word here. The word will be ministered here throughout the week, every week. Whether it's me or not, there's people here that's qualified to do it, and it will be there. I'm gonna, because that's what I have to answer to Jesus for. I have to answer to Jesus for providing an adequate uh, curriculum for his people 
so that they can develop and grow. And that I'm going to do. What you do with that is your call. I'm going to love you and I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to tell you you're right when you're wrong. Amen. If you're wrong, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Amen. And I'm going to love you and I'm going to provide a curriculum. for. Now, what you do with that is your call. But I have no intention of being rebuked by Jesus for not doing what I'm supposed to do. Now listen to what he says here. Matthew chapter number six. You see verse 33? I know you can quote it, but I don't want to. But seek first. Seek first. Seek first. Seek first. Do you know why homes are falling apart? They're not seeking Jesus first. You know why the kids are going one way, husband one way, and wife one way? They're not. I know, I know, you, I know everybody would like to just take this down and say, Pastor, just, just, let's just don't do it that way. I don't know no other way. If you want a solidified home, and I say it to you, you that are starting, getting, getting started. Josh, I'm, you, I'm talking to you and Whitney. You want a solidified home. Let Jesus be on the throne of that household. If you're playing games and chasing mammon, the devil will tear your house up before you get it started. You are not smart enough. The, I'm telling you, the devil is old and mean, and you are not smart enough to stay with your wife if the devil coming in to tear it up. I see it all. I see it. I see it all the time. All the time. And they're not heathens either. These are church going people that call themselves Christians. And I can't love my wife and I can't love my husband. And I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, you're going to be out of there until you seek first. And I'm not talking about no little passive. I'm talking about radically seeking first the kingdom. Listen, 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 folks. I wasn't born yesterday. I, I've, been, I've lived long enough to see a few things. And I've experienced a few things. And I know, I know what, I know, I know that devil, he's mean. I've been dealing with him for 65 years. You learn some things. First thing I found out was I'm greater, the greatest heathens in me than that thing is. And I made a decision. Shoot your best shot because this ball will be standing when you're gone. I made a decision to walk in holiness before I had an opportunity to fail. Yes. You, don't, you don't wait until there's an opportunity to fail to decide whether or not you're going to be holy or not. Amen. You're late. You're going to miss it. Amen. You got you to decide. You got to say, men, you got to decide that you're not going to be running around with no coattail before you get a chance to. That's right. That's right. That's right. Women, you're going to have to decide that you're going to love and honor your husband before you have an opportunity to flirt with somebody else. You better make a decision and a certain decision. I will be faithful to my husband until life leaves my body. I will be faithful to my wife until life leaves my body. You got to make that choice. You don't wait for the opportunity to fail and make that choice. You make that choice up front. Put the devil right out of business, right up front. Put him right out of business. Because once you tell, see, I realized I slam dunked him. I slam dunked him. I didn't realize the power in what I was doing. But God helped me. I, had, I drew a pact with Jesus. Made, Jesus, made a, Jesus and I made a pact. I told him, I said, Jesus, in essence, I said, if I, I, said, if I, ever, if I ever go to crawl in the bed with another woman, I said, take the life right out of my body. If I ever, if I ever, if I ever, as long as my wife is alive, if I ever go to crawl up in the sack with another woman, I said, take the life right out. Don't, don't, don't leave me, just drop me dead right there. Knock the wind right out of the devil, boy. 
And I meant that. Amen. I meant that. Amen. Before I'll do something as stupid as that and embarrass Jesus, my wife, and you, I will leave this planet. Yes, Amen. Put the devil right out of business. Amen. Now what are you going to do? Amen. He got nothing to do, you see. Amen. And you can slam dunk him. But if you're going to just sit around, well, I'm going to see how she work out. I'll tell you how she's going to work out. Not good. Got her doing a prenuptial. Huh, save the ink. You are planning to fail. It hasn't even started yet. Are you hearing what, are you hearing what I'm saying? You said, Pastor, that's awful radical. You got to be radical with a devil that's old and mean as that thing we're dealing with. You got to be just as radical as he is mean. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. See, and you young people, you can do the same thing. You, can, you don't have to wait till you get married. You can make a pact right now and say, bless God, I'll be pure yes, until the day I stand at the altar. Yes, and you ought to do that. 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 Amen. You see, because you know, because do you know there are statistics to show that, 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 that young people that are pure at the time of their marriage are way less likely to fail. Amen. Check the statistics. And there's a great gap too. But those that have been, been promiscuous, it's just another round. That's all it is. Do you see how the devil is destroying people? Make a decision that you are not going to be a servant of mammon but a servant of the true and living God. Is there have to be, is there, is there going to be a, you got to, but yes, yes, there is going to be a commitment. Yes, you're going to have to make a commitment. If you, you just being normal, you're going to fail. I'm going to tell you, I just, I'm going to tell you straight. If you're just going to be normal, you're going to fail. I'll tell you that right now. You got to, you got to, you got to go at this. You got to go at this from God's perspective. You got to, you got to be radical at this thing. If you want a household that God loves to dwell in, then bless God, you're going to have to take it by force. Right. <coughs> the scripture teaches you that. Amen. Take it. Yes, take it. Jesus. Take it. It's yours. Amen. Amen. Crucify your flesh. Mm -hmm. Line yourself with the word of God. Amen. Seek. First, prayer, the word daily, memorize scriptures, put them in your heart. Prayer, asserted prayer before God, the word of God daily, got to do it. He said, but I don't have time. Well, you did. Well, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. If you don't have time, forget it. Because you're going under. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. You are going. If you don't have time, you know, you're just so busy. You don't have time. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to go to prayer. I, mean, I don't have time to go to Bible study. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to pray. Forget it because it's a matter of time and it ain't going to be long. You're going to be a statistic. I, I just wish I, I can't give it to you any better because that's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. But if you will seek, what do God, what is he doing? Playing games? Jesus don't know what he's talking about. He said, seek first. First. Seek first. First. This is, seek first. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. His holiness. His standard of living. His way of life. 
You say, but God, I got to go to work. He said, don't worry about it. I'll read, read the rest of that. And all these things. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, then get in the wheelbar. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. No, 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 no. No, if you believe it, if you believe it, if you believe it, say, you know, you indict yourself. Go ahead, stand up. If you believe it, get in the wheelbar. See, you, you, no, no, see, see, you got to believe this. You got to believe it. To believe is to do it. To believe it. Listen, am I going to have to, yeah, some of you are going to have to change your daily habits. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to have to change your routines. You're going to, some of you are going to have to change your routines. Because you're not giving yourself to God. God loves you. Do you know how much God loves you? But do you know God cannot do anything for you until you connect with him through his word? He, he can't. As much as he loves you, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish. Listen, there's no way that you're going to seek God and He not add things to you. You got to believe that. You got to believe that He'll do that. You got to believe it. And you got to show Him by seeking Him. And when you seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, his way, not your ideas, but God's righteousness. His word, obey and do what his word say. Amen. Then all these things, there is no way God going to let you go hungry. Amen. The David said, I have been young, now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And don't tell me you're going to be the first one. No such thing as that. But you got to do it. You said, my past, I've been going to church. I don't care how long you've been going to church. Amen. Have you known Jesus? Have you surrendered to the righteousness of God? Have you given yourself to him totally and completely? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Every head's bowed. Father. We thank you today for speaking to us. God, help us to hear. Give us ears to hear and a heart to perceive and a will and a desire to do what you are speaking to us to do. To seek first the kingdom. Putting all other things aside. Seek can first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and God all these things shall be added unto us. Help us to turn to the one true and living God. Turn away from mammon. It's a false God. It's a lie. It won't work. It has a mouth, but it can't speak. It has eyes, but it can't see. It has a nose, but it can't smell. Feet it has, but it cannot walk. God, you are the one true and living God. And we seek you first and your righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto us. With every head bowed and every eyes.